Okay, everyone, welcome back to DSP versus the Internet, episode 42 for December 10th, 2023. Having a good time with some festive Christmas stuff and other stuff as well. But before we continue, it is time once a week where I answer super level member questions here on the channel in a lightning round style. Uh, we actually have several holiday related questions this week. I'm happy that they're holiday related. So let's jump right in. First question Whether it was elementary, middle school, or high school, did your school ever have an event where you would exchange Christmas gifts with other classmates? No. Um, what they had, my elementary school had a Christmas fair. And that fair, if I'm remembering correctly, what you could do is you they had a bunch of like knickknacks and things that were sold in the gymnasium. And so every year I would go and I would buy a few things for various family members. I always get something nice for my mom, uh, you know, or other people. So, you know, my, my great aunt, stuff like that. Um, I remember one year I bought my mom this nice little figurine that was like festive, like a Christmas dog that had like a hat and stuff on. It was really cute and she really liked it. Um, but outside of that, <clears throat> I don't recall ever exchanging gifts with like classmates. No, I don't remember that. Did your parents ever take you to a mall or shopping center and have you sat on Santa's lap? Yes. I, I remember I did. I couldn't tell you when or how old I was or anything like that but I just I do remember going to a mall and, and waiting in line and sitting on Santa's lap as a kid <clears throat> but I don't remember much after that what was your best present you ever got for Christmas as a kid or teenager as a young child before the era of everything being digital video game the best present I ever got was Eternia which was when back in the day I was a huge fan of He-Man in the 80s and He-Man in the Masters of the Universe I should say and so Eternia was this cool playset, and it was a giant central castle, and it linked other playsets that you already owned from Masters of the Universe. So if you liked the good guys, you had Castle Grayskull. If you liked the bad guys, you had Snake Mountain. Well, this was the central thing, and they, they would actually like combine to become one giant playset together. And it was cool because you could have fights in the middle. You know, that's what it was supposed to be, like the giant f middle battleground. And then you could fight to the one side, fight to the other side, which was really neat. Um, so that was really cool. Um, but my parents didn't like me having toys all over the house. So whenever I had something big like that, that it, we had an attic that was like a half-finished attic. So we actually built – I remember building it that day, Christmas Day with my dad. We built it. We played with it. And every once in a while, like maybe like once a week or twice a month, we would go up to the attic and have like a big hours-long play session, like three, four hours. We would play with toys and stuff up there. But – I wasn't just allowed to play with my toys whenever I wanted. When I was a kid, like, that was a reward. You know, you do your homework, you do the stuff you're supposed to do, your chores. Then when all that's done, then you're allowed to watch TV, to play video games, to play with your toys. So I didn't get to even use it that much. I remember, like, got it for Christmas, and probably, like I said, like, maybe once a week, maybe once every other week, I would go up there for a few hours and play with my dad. And that was it. Like, I remember after, like, a year of having it, I was already grown out of Masters of the Universe. And I was into other things like G.I. Joe and Transformers. And then it wasn't really used anymore. So that was the biggest toy I ever got. Because I believe it was expensive, too. Um, best present I ever got overall was absolutely in the early 90s, the Super Nintendo. You know, Super Nintendo was such an outstanding game system. And I remember I got the Super Nintendo that was bundled with Super Mario World. And I, I think I got another game, too. But I couldn't tell you what the other game was that I got with it. I know that I owned games like Zelda Link to the Past, uh, Mario Kart, stuff like that, like early on. And then later on, I had a bunch of other games for Super Nintendo. But I can't, I don't remember what other, I just remember Christmas Day, unpacking it, hooking it up, and playing Super Mario World all day. It was such a good game, I couldn't stop playing it. I got so immersed in this world where every, every world was a different theme, all these secrets, new power-ups, the, the music, the graphics were so improved from the, the original Nintendo Entertainment System. I loved it. That was, by far to this day, I still have great memories of the Super Nintendo getting it as a kid. Um, when did you realize that Christmas wasn't just about only getting Christmas gifts? Oh, of course, later, you know, when I became a teenager <clears throat> and, you know... Basically, Christmas, uh, for a lot of people, is a holiday about kids. You make the kids happy. You tell them about Santa Claus, you know, carols and decorations, and you get the kids presents. When I grew up, it wasn't about that anymore. I, I, you know, you get to a point, you don't even ask for stuff for Christmas anymore, right? Like, I remember probably in like my late teens, I didn't ask for Christmas presents anymore. I got 
sometimes I would get nice stuff or you know you get older people just give you money and stuff if they give you anything so at that point you realize Christmas is more about the season it's more about being nice to people and you know holiday cheer and watching Christmas specials and movies and food and spending time with friends or relatives and it's not really just about getting stuff right so I would say probably my my mid to late teens that I realized that um did you and your family each have your own personal Christmas stockings where you put your own treats in uh, in our own house like my own household yes like I had a stocking my cousin had a stocking and because my cousin lived with me and was kind of like my sister for a while um so we had our own stockings and those would basically be filled with like candy and treats it wasn't like toys in there it was more like candy and treats and stuff that would be like loaded on christmas morning but the big stocking was on christmas eve we would go over to my great aunt and uncle's house and my uncle my great uncle would dress up like santa and come out with these giant stockings for me and my cousins and we would all get a big stocking and that was a mix it was candy it was toys it was all kinds of stuff that we would get in those stockings from that kind of side of the family and that was the big stocking that i got once a year so okay there you go a fully holiday themed q a that was pretty nice actually and then of course then this dims uh so pretty good thank you for asking those questions remember that if you want to be a part of this fun if you become a member today you can submit the videos for next week if you become a super member you can ask the questions i just answered and if you become an ultra member we're guaranteed to watch your clips that was actually the first nine clips we watched this week was from ultra members okay well let's continue on uh depending on how far we get we might actually reset the playlist um let's see we are near i believe we're getting near the end of the playlist and then we might go to the beginning and we might actually watch all the clips this week. We'll see. We're making great progress this week. Okay? All right. Let's see what's next. Red side. World's first bicycle. What is this? The Daimler Wright Wagon. 1885. Automated. Oh, look. So it looks like this is the history of automated vehicles or motor vehicles, right? No. What's this? Speed Comparison 3D. Hussein Bolt. Uh. The Wright Flyer. The Wright Brothers. Cool. It's pretty crazy to fly that thing. Now, a cheetah, the world's fastest land animal. Whoa! The benzene. <laughs> chopper. The Westland G Lynx Chopper. Whoa, look at that sucker. What is that? Is it Wars X2? Oh, yeah. I knew about this. That was their, their prototype. They never really sold it. The Spirit of Australia World Water Record. SSC Tuatara, world's fastest car. Huh. Okay, the world's fastest train. Maglev. And then we've got Ack Attack, world's fastest motorcycle. That's a motorcycle? It's called the Ack Attack? I'm surprised it's not in the tractor. Maybe about me. The Boeing 757. There you go. Standard Delta plane. SSE, most fast is Rust. It's a car with four motors. It's called Rust engine. The speed of sound. The Blackbird, fastest air breathing manned aircraft. Air Force Blackbird. Damn, the Rotary X-14, fastest crew and rocket powered aircraft. Now we're getting insane. The hypersonic rocket sled. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. The NASA X-43 fastest jet aircraft. It's going so fast you can't even see around you. International Space Station. Well, that's because it's orbiting Earth, right? So that's why it's fast. And a space shuttle. Good Lord. The Apollo 10. Okay. What was that when it was coming back into orbit? 
or coming back into the atmosphere. So these are all spacecraft. Because they're in space, you don't realize how fast they're moving, right? Yeah. Wow, we're not even halfway through? We're not even halfway through. What are faster man-made objects than these? Right? All space probes of things. Okay. Oh, what's this? Oh, it reset? It reset. Oh, okay. It's the same. You know what it is? It's from a different angle. You're seeing the things fly by. Okay, well, we already know that. So basically, it goes to space with space travel. Okay, cool. What's that? Oh, a German Christmas in Ains? Okay. What's the German for Christmas stocking? What? What do you mean there's no German tradition of stuffing an oversized sock with miniature presents and a tangerine? Ha <laughs> ha! I don't a tangerine. I don't put a tangerine. Stocking. Okay, so there are some things the Germans are missing out on at Christmas, but they've got enough of their own traditional elements to set the festive season apart. The details vary from region to region and family to family, but here's a Meet the Germans rundown of 10 vital ingredients for a very German Christmas. Okay. Around four weeks before Christmas, little clusters of wooden huts adorned with twinkling lights spring up on market squares across Germany. These Christmas markets are renowned the world over. We just saw one of these last week. That was one of the videos we watched last week was one of those markets. There's food, drink, a peculiar abundance of sugared nuts, and Christmas gifts galore. That brings us swiftly to point number two, Gluva. The weather might be cold and your car won't we saw start, this last week but in too. December, you can drink hot wine the to your heart's content. Wine. For an yep. extra kick, hot get a Gluva in Mitschuss. That's with a shot of rum or amaretto. In Germany, half the fun of Christmas is the anticipation, so they really make the most of Advent traditions. There's the Advent wreath, for example, that's got a candle to be lit on every that one of the four the Sundays States leading up kid. to Christmas. The Advent calendar game is also really that we strong also here. Did. It's very popular to make a homemade, personalized Advent calendar for your partner or your child. I'm talking perfect Pinterest fodder. <laughs> Another wholesome Christmas activity is baking Christmas cookies, or Plätzchen. Plätzchen. There's a lot of vanilla, cinnamon, and jam involved. Mm. And the different variations have funky names like Spitzbuber, which means grasshopper, <laughs> and Engelsaugen, angel eyes. If a German invites you over for Christmas and you turn up on the 25th of December, you're sadly a day too late. Oh. The 24th is known as Heiliger Abend, or Holy Evening, and that's when the gifts are traditionally exchanged. Old Saint Nick does the rounds on the 6th of December, leaving chocolates and nuts in children's well, shoes. Well, that's completely At different. At Christmas, the presents are left under the tree, either by the Weihnachtsmann, literally Christmas man, or the Christkind, a blonde angel-like figure. The Christkind must be way more stealthy than Santa, because the presents magically appear in the middle of the day. No. The gift-bearing St. Nicholas, who comes on the 6th of December, also has some more mean-spirited mates. Oh. Depending on where they live in Germany, uh -oh. children might be threatened with a visit from Knecht Ruprecht, or from Campus, a half-goat, half-demon, who brings children cold and We about them last week, too. Them, because nothing says Christmas spirit like striking fear into the hearts of naughty children, right? <laughs> The exact food eaten on Christmas varies between families, but a popular choice for the 24th is potato salad and sausage. Two food items the Germans will apparently try and crowbar into any I was going to say, don't they just eat that anyway? Ah, the Tannenbaum. Of course we have Germany to thank for the modern Christmas. Oh, do we? I didn't even know In that. In southern Germany, there's even a tradition called Christbaumloben. This basically entails knocking on your neighbor's door, praising their Christmas tree, knocking back a schnapps, and then moving on to the next house to repeat the process. <laughs> In Germany, you... So walk through your whole neighborhood, knock on everyone's door, and drink at every door. Say, oh, your Christmas tree's really great. Hey, hey, oh, oh I'll see you later. <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. Might notice a mysterious code chalked above doorways. Uh -oh. The C, M, and B stand for Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. The three Otherwise wise known men. as the three wise yep. men. The numbers at the beginning and end combine to make the year. On January the 6th, which is Epiphany or Three Kings Day, lots of German kids dressed as kings will go around their neighborhood singing songs and collecting sweets and charity funds. We don't do that. These chalky symbols are left behind, and that brings the festive season to a close for another year. Ah, so that's the last thing they do, the first week of January to do a Three th three Kings celebration. That's interesting. But they said their Christmas is December 6th? Wow. That's really early. Holy shit. Well, to anyone out there in Germany, Merry Christmas. We missed it. It's the 10th. Shit. Sorry about that. Oh. A stray doggo. A stray puppy. Wow. 
That is a very friendly dog. You definitely, yeah, I no collar. It's an abandoned dog, for sure. Sad. Of course he's gonna follow you. I'm like, where are we going? Poor guy. <laughs> no. Yeah, but I have to say this. Isn't this isn't it conveniently scripted? Like, how did they have this fucking HD camera with them? It's not even a phone camera. It's a full widescreen camera that they just happened to have with them when all this happened, right? This is this seems like bullshit to me. Doesn't it seem stupidly staged? It does to me, right? was hesitant to enter. <clears throat> he can't believe he's like, wait, I can come in? I can come in? Look how excited to go in. He's like, oh, 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 I can come in? Go in! Yeah. Uh, look how afraid he is to enter. I guess you have a dog now. Well, first thing you gotta do is give him a flea bath. Make sure he doesn't infest your house, right? Especially if you're keeping him. This is the, the best quality HD improv camera I've ever seen. Look at how good the camera is that this person has. Why is it so insanely good quality? Fully focused, everything pure HD at all times. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like, it's crazy. No, they forget that they need to flee back. Oh, he starts drinking the water. Yeah. Nah, he needs to, he needs to flee back. A regular bath ain't gonna cut it. He's been out on the streets, he could be infested. How long does this go on? They wash him, and then they adopt him. The end. Okay. Happy, heartwarming story. Let's continue. <laughs> what is this? Okay. Right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wait, what? No, he's gonna break it? He's gonna destroy... A bunch of switches. He is, isn't he? Wait, that's not the same click. Why isn't it the same click? Smash, smash, smash. Ah, oh, no. A new kind of heated competition ignites right on Nintendo Switch. Oh, this one's gonna be Smash Bros for the Switch. Oh, this one's gonna be it. Splatoon 2 World Inkling Invitational. Oh. Dude, could you stop doing that unless it's actually a nap? All right, I'm bored. This was six years ago. This is for Nintendo fanboys. I'm bored. I want to move on. Have a holly jolly Christmas. 
What the hell? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh. What? The oh, Jesus Christ! Jasper, how dare you? Jasper, how dare you scare me like that? Come on, Jasper Kitty. You can't be doing that, man. You made me poop my pants here. It's supposed to be Christmas. You can't be behaving like that. Okay, what's going on? What's that noise? What's that noise? Oh my god, it's the most hideous thing I've ever seen! Ah! <laughs> Do I think this is supposed to be a, like a parody? There you go. Little Shake and Bake, thank you for making that. Little Shake and Bake made that specifically just for the show. As a joke, obviously, right? I think it's supposed to be, isn't it like a parody of almost like Five Nights at Freddy's? Because Five Nights at Freddy's frequently will do that. They'll do like a grainy video and they'll mess with the audio and then all of a sudden something jumps on the screen that makes you like scared, right? So thank you to Little Shake and Bake for that. I appreciate that video. That was actually a pretty nice one. I like that one. Thanks for doing a custom video. We rarely get a custom made video for the React show and we actually got one this week, which is really nice. So thank you for that. That was funny. Her work was going to throw out this Christmas tree for a reason you're about to see. But she asked if she could take it home instead, and I think she made the right decision. Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> Yikes! It's like a jump scare when Christmas tree. It's like a jump scare Christmas tree. Right? <laughs> like, ooh! It's like, it feels like someone's snapping their neck. Yikes. All Santa, her little boy spotted him and instantly ran from her and headed oh my God. Santa as fast as he could go Careful. for a hug. And it's so wholesome. Aww. Santa even picked him up and talked to him, making this a magical moment for this little That's man. That's cute. Oh, you know how to make Santa's day. And his reaction when he set him down is great. When they were at the mall and- Okay, that's it. That's That's the playlist, I think um for that but what we can do we can now reset the playlist we might actually get through all the clips this week because a lot of the clips that were submitted were very very short so there's a chance we might actually get through all the clips so hold on a second because that was the end of the playlist but if we reset the playlist we may be able to just go through them all i think we have yeah, we only have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's only like eight videos left. For the first time ever, we may actually get through all the videos on DSP versus the internet. If you can believe it. About 13. All right. So, this is actually a good place to split the part, I feel. Because I think this video is long. How long is this video? Hold on. How long is this video? Oh, it's only three minutes. Let's watch it. Let's watch the video and then we'll split the part. Cool. Here we go. Weirdest Christmas traditions from around the world. Cool. 80% of the world's population is Christian. However, this doesn't stop the rest of the world from celebrating Christmas. <laughs> even celebrated by other religions in almost every corner of the globe. So here are some of the strangest variations of Christmas. No, before you go. Number 10, Japan. In the early 70s, Japan went through a poultry crisis. One of the only places to have turkey Look at Christmas Yakuza. was a KFC. Since then, it has become somewhat of a Japanese Christmas tradition to eat there. That's right. So much so that the KFC now recommends placing orders in advance. Which now we know. So that really Nine, Spain. In Catalonia, the Christmas log has an entirely different meaning. Oh. The cagatillo, or pooing log, oh. is placed on the table prior to Christmas and is fed fruit and sweeties. On Christmas Eve, what? the family then beats the log with sticks what? while singing traditional songs in order for it to defecate the candy. What? Catalonians have even included defecation in their nativity scenes. Eight. Now you guys give me a hard time about my scat humor. Why don't you bother Spain? That's ridiculous. Even I think that's too far. That's absolutely disgusting. I'm very dis disturbed at anyone who's Spanish right now. How dare you? Australia. 
Christmas in Australia is in the summertime, so That's you right. won't find Opposite. stockings by the fire. But it's not all sunshine. If you go to sit on Santa's knee, you might also encounter his evil counterpart, Krampus. Oh, well, we know about A demon like Krampus. creature that punishes bad children. Seven, Norway. A popular tradition in Norway is Yule Book, a decorative straw goat. Oh, that's Apparently interesting. the custom has that. origins in the worship of Thor, who rode a chariot pulled by two goats. What the shit? It Look is also that. customary on Christmas Eve to hide all the brooms. This date coincides with the fabled arrival of evil spirits and Oh, witches. come on, that was the evil spirits. Six Christmas for whales. In some rural areas of Wales, each year a villager is chosen to perform the Mary Lloyd ritual. The what? This involves parading the streets with a mare's skull on a pole, whilst the other villagers Why? sing traditional spooky songs. What is wrong with you? Wales, if you're from Wales, stay in Wales. Don't don't leave. No one wants to do that on Christmas. Hey, Greenland. That's disturbing. Some people hate Brussels sprouts at Christmas. No, everyone hates Brussels sprouts who has a sense of taste. Mas. Yeah. They don't have Brussels in Greenland, however. They have Matak. Raw whale skin with mouthfuls of blubber still attached. Another festive delicacy is Kiviak, a decayed dead seabird wrapped in seal skin having been buried for a few months. Yummy. Four, Portugal. During the traditional Christmas feast or consoada, it is Portuguese tradition in some regions to also set a place at the festive table for the deceased family members. Perhaps a reminder Aww. of the ghosts of Christmas past. No, that's, I mean, that's sad, but that also is a little, it makes sense. You, you know, if you have the family members who always used to attend your Christmas event and they're not there anymore, you, you at least leave a place in honor of them. That I get. That It's sad, but that I get. That I understand. It's not like the dead body is sitting in there. Three, Germany. You're probably familiar with Santa Claus filling your stockings full of presents if you've been a good boy. Sure. However, in Germany, it's shoes that Santa fills. Oh, not look with at presents, that. but with a branch with sweets attached. Oh, if cool. you've been a naughty boy, however... I mean, that's bad if you have stinky shoes, though. He might just leave you a bare branch. Two, Mexico. In Oaxaca, every year, thousands of locals flock to the main plaza to contemplate the Yuletime nativity scenes. Nothing different there, however, everything is made entirely out of radishes. Really? So, yeah. How, how, did, that, how did that tradition happen? That's kind of neat, but why? Hmm. Number one, Italy. Are you sick of seeing a jolly fat man dressed in red every winter? Then head over to Italy where instead of Santa, they have La Befana, <gasps> a kindly witch who hands out presents <gasps> Christmas. No, witch I'm not going, no, I'm not going there. All right, I've changed my mind, I never want to go there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the finale. We have one more part left of DSP versus the internet for this week, and for the first time ever, we may actually get through all of the clips pretty cool. Thank you for watching. The final part is coming next. I'll see you then.